Adelaide's flagship hospital, the Royal Adelaide, recently moved to a new facility at the cost of $2.4 billion. This new facility has implemented new technology, increased the capacity, and created a better working environment. But was it worth the steep price? It's bigger in some ways. Yeah. Certainly in sight it's bigger. It's um, certainly a lot shinier. Uh, and it has much better opportunities for eating sushi, and the courtyards are magnificent. It's a lovely environment to work in, it's actually a beautiful building, um, whereas the old bra was uh, basically falling down. So it, it, it is a lovely new building, lots of great technology, um, and, uh, and it's, it is exciting to be a part of something so new. The Royal Adelaide Hospital covers 10 hectares of land. That's about the size of two football fields. Almost four of these hectares are dedicated to landscaped gardens and internal green space. It also has 70 courtyards, terraces and sky gardens within the facility. This new hospital has 800 beds, 700 of which are dedicated to overnight patients, including 40 mental health beds and it also has 100 single day beds. Patient accommodation has vastly improved at the new Royal Adelaide compared to its predecessor, with all single patient rooms focusing on using natural light and sustainability, and having outstanding levels of privacy, comfort and infection control. It's gone from um, wards where they had shared beds to everybody having a single cubicle, and that's both within the emergency department, where we have single rooms for everybody, and in the wards where there are single rooms. So. Everybody gets their own room, they get their own bathroom, whereas at the old RA, you could be in a shared room full of four to six people. Every room has what's called a day bed, so a loved one or a relative can actually stay with the patient if they want to. Well, every person who is an inpatient who gets to an inpatient ward will love the quality of the rooms. Yeah. They, they are awesome, they're much bigger, you've got room for friends or family to sleep in the, in the same room as you, yeah. lovely. For new hospital has implemented lots of new medical technology to assist the staff in treating and caring for patients. Some of these new technologies include automated guided vehicles which deliver food, linen and other pharmaceutical supplies. I, I honestly couldn't tell you how much of a, an improvement that's been. Uh, I think they work reasonably well. Um, yeah. There were certainly lots of issues when we first opened the hospital about having the right equipment in the right places. Uh, and having things stopped correctly. But how much of that was just again to, to being new personnel? Automated dispensing cabinets, or ADCs, provide 24 7 access to an increased range of medication through fingerprint passwords. A total lab automation will help the new hospital fully automate the processing of specimens, including blood, urine, and stab wounds. The Central Sterile Services Department will replace paper records and use a state-of-the-art digital system for tracking the new RAS vast collection of medical instruments. There have been downsides to a new hospital though. It's a very beautiful shiny hospital which you look at it and think, I would think it should work better than it does. When you move into a, a new house, there's always little issues that you've got to sort out and the RA has been like that. The biggest impact has been on um, what we call access block. So access block is when patients spend longer than eight hours within the emergency department waiting for an inpatient bed. Um, before we moved to this hospital, we roughly have 15 to 20 patients on a bad day waiting for a bed at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, at the moment, it's about 40. Um, now, that might not sound good or bad, but when I have an emergency department that has roughly 42 assessment spaces for our, our ambulance patients, then obviously having 40 patients waiting for a bed is, is a pretty difficult thing to have and to have an emergency department effectively working. Length of stay uh, has gone up since the move. And that, I think, comes back to a lot of these infrastructure changes, some of the IT changes, and, and just unfamiliarity with the new hospital. 
the available data would suggest that we're not as efficient at the moment as we were in the old hospital. Um, I'm going to say I want more beds. That's a very unpopular thing for any buddy in, a, in an executive position to say within the health service because overall probably the number of beds may be reasonable for our service mm -hmm. but in terms of the overall efficiency and, and availability of beds for emergency admissions we're certainly struggling uh, hugely um, because we have so many patients waiting for beds within the department and we're still getting the same number actually slightly more patients coming in we're trying to manage them in a relatively small area so that makes people feel busier the nursing staff are certainly busier um, as we're trying to look for the after the new patients and the ones who've already been waiting with us for 12 24 hours as a short-term fix more beds would certainly help mm -hmm. um, however if you have more beds but don't change the way that people work and the efficiency of the hospital so the length of stay doesn't decrease what tends to happen is that you just defer the problem for a little bit and then you, you have the same issue again. Yeah. So you fill those beds and then you still have patients waiting. So the key right. is actually ensuring that your hospitals are as efficient as possible. Was there enough um, consultation with the right people? I don't think there was. I mean, I think, I think definitely not. Some of the decisions that were made were clearly not sensible, in my view, and I as soon as I'd heard about the, the decisions, I'd expressed that. If we address the efficiency issues, we may all feel different in five years' time. We're, we're always constantly trying to do better and to get better outcomes for our patients. So I think the, and I hope the way we do work in five years' time will be different to how we work now and it will be better for the patients.